So I just put together a deck that I think is super saucy. You may not have heard of it before because to be honest with you, I saw it like a single time online and I was like, wait, this makes a lot of sense. So I kind of built it myself, put together my own little spankle twist on it. And I think this deck is absolutely insane. And the deck of course that I'm talking about is Fiendsmith Adventure. There are two different engines that work so well together. And I wanted to show you guys how to build this deck, how to play this deck and how insane it can be. So with that being said, I want to get right into the deck profile so I can show you how to play Fiendsmith Adventure in today's format competitively. Let's go. All right, so just to get into the deck profile here, I do want to show you guys all the different engines we play, and I'm going to talk about their synergies as well. There are so many cards that synergize so well in this deck. I will say it's hard to show you guys like a combo video per se, because it is the Fiendsmith engine that you guys are going to see. And the Fiendsmith combos are kind of standard and generic Fiendsmith combos, but I kind of want to explain why all of the synergies work. And in just testing and in play, it really works really well. Okay, right? So there's not a specific combo line per se. And that's the thing that I actually like about this deck is there's no like linear your combo it's just wherever your hand takes you which is absolutely insane so first things first of course we're playing three water enchantress three right one faithful one draco back as well as the one griffin rider this is the adventure package this is all you're playing this is all you're ever going to need this package is absolutely insane because it puts up an omni negate over here which is crazy because in today's format not a lot of omni negates are being put up so it's really nice to have this kind of sort of omni negate but it works so well with the engines as well because you're not using your normal summon at all for your fiendsmith engine right so it works really well with the fiendsmith engine in that sense it also works really well with another engine that i'm going to be talking about but this in general is absolutely insane of course so we're playing the standard adventure engine and we're also playing a fiendsmith engine so we're playing three engraver over here i know this card is kind of expensive but it's a great card three engraver we're playing three tracked and then one lurie okay the reason we're on three tracked actually is just for consistency sake you really want to get this uh, this kind of engine going as fast as possible so we are on three track one lurie of course is really good track searching lurie of course is always going to be a good thing as well right so three track three uh of the engraver and then the one lurie lurie is actually a really good one card combo or not one card but two card combo with the parallel exceed over here because when you have Lurie, you can make your Requiem, Requiem, then you can summon your Parallel Exceed to its zone, and then this is going to set up a lot of your combos as well. So Parallel Exceed, I think, is an absolutely insane card in this deck, another extender that does not need your normal summon, and that's the most important thing because you're playing this package. You don't want to be using your normal summon. So I was looking for one more extender to play, and this is the extender that I kind of came across, 3 Sakitama. Now, this is just because it's a level 4 and it can help you make your rank 4s, which is kind of important in this deck. Another thing you can play if you choose not to play Sakitama is your your Terra Top, Terra Top plus your Taki Tomborg. But I chose not to play that engine just because we are actually playing in the hand trap lineup. We are playing Bestials and it doesn't really work super well with the Bestials. So that's why I chose not to. And I think Bestials are so important in today's format with Ubel running around, even with all the different Fiendsmith packages in every deck. Ubel, Fiendsmith, Snake Eye, Fiendsmith, Fiendsmith, Memento, whatever you guys see with Fiendsmith, like the Bestials are just so good against this. And then of course against Ubel and against a lot of dark and light decks, it's really good. So that's why I didn't want to play Terra Top because the Bestials are really important and so i thought this was also really good because it's a level four extender for you and a level four extender for you also means you get more access to your extra deck and you get just link access which is obviously really good like it's not just for xc summoning but it's just good link access as well so three sakitama and then to kind of round off the engines we are playing the one angel statue azurne this card of course is really good because you end on silhouette rabbit it's another form of disruption and negation that you can put up again without using your normal summon and this engine helps you get into that little link two over there so so easily so that's that's why we're playing the one angel statue then we're playing flag and we're playing corridor yes we are playing thunder dragon colossus in here baby because we can get to it it's very easy to get to it of course if you open these you get the colossus really easily you banish a lot in this deck which is nice but then of course if you don't open the corridor or the flag what you can do is you can go into banshee which is your rank four and i'll show you guys that right now you go into banshee banshee will search the flag you summon the flag you search the corridor and then corridor will be able to summon itself for thunder dragon colossus now you guys might be wondering how do you banish so many cards well if you actually think about it, the fiendsmith engine banishes cards your water enchantress banish itself like it's very easy to banish cards in this deck and so that's kind of why we're playing all these different engines because they banish themselves they activate all these cards nothing here is a normal summon all of them just synergize really well with each other and you're putting up multiple disruptions so like if you go parallel exceed into your flame banshee and then flame banshee into colossus then you're ending on uh, requiem plus colossus right there then you can use the requiem effect and then requiem you know the whole combo right there right so that's why these these synergies really work now the other thing you could do instead of playing banshee into these 
is you could uh so, so basically instead of colossus instead of playing corridor you could play cordos that's another option for you i personally like corridor because i think colossus is just such a really good disruption your opponent a lot of the time won't have enough to deal with colossus plus whatever else you're putting up on board right so that's why i really like this engine i think colossus is absolutely insane in today's format but again you guys can play uh, the protos instead here if you guys wanted to i think it's called protos right arch nemesis protos the one that you summon like it summons itself or whatever that's really good but these are all the different engines you're playing just before we move on actually i was going to say the other thing that i like about these engines as well is they all meld really well with each other they all synergize really well so it doesn't matter if you open fiendsmith plus like water enchanters that's insane if you open sakitama plus your fiendsmith engine or sakitama plus your water enchanters or your nemesis package like these work so well together so that if you see any two packages you're you're absolutely insane right so that's why i really like these packages because they're so strong and they all work well together so of course you guys saw the engine there but i really want to show you guys what the non-engine looks looks like so we're playing three ash because you can play so much on engine actually it's so powerful three ash three droll we're playing one magna two druis and one baldrake i think these are the best hand traps in today's format and then actually lastly we're playing three imperm here these are of course the best hand traps in today's format i think nib is another good one that you guys can play i chose not to play nib of course because it's good in today's format but then you have stuff like ubel which puts up phantom which means it's anti-nib some of the decks are making the genix level 10 so you don't lose to nib either so that's why i chose not to play nib i actually chose to play this lineup and i think this is like the best lineup that you guys can be playing the other thing with this lineup that i'm specifically choosing to do is i'm playing one called by the grave but we're also playing one cross out designator now cross out is really good in this deck because in this deck you are playing the fiendsmith engine you are playing a lot of these different engines that do lose to cards like bestials they do lose to cards like droll they lose to ash and imperm of course not as high impact as these ones but these are really high impact so i was thinking listen cross out designator over here you play this you're protecting yourself against all of these another reason why we're not playing nibiru is because you're never gonna lose to nib like this deck doesn't lose to nib you are setting up your adventure package all the time and being able to set that up means you're never really gonna lose to nib so that's why i'm playing this for the non-engine i think this non-engine is absolutely insane the bestials right now are really really good so i really want to play these and they help you push for game and there are link fodder which is really good and drew swarm being link fodder means it's also a board breaker just insane just everything is so good here moving on to the extra deck here this is kind of what ties everything together so of course we're playing the one requiem the one sequence the one desiree the one moon and the one necroquip princess this is very standard in all of your fiendsmith engines of course if you don't open luri you go into moon and then moon goes into engraver which is a full combo anyways necroquip is also of course really powerful and then we're also playing the one aerial eater aerial eater is actually really good because when it's student summoned you can just send a fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard so you're setting up kind of your graveyard with this card it's also an extender for you if you need to be it also banishes cards for it to summon itself from the graveyard so when you're banishing cards you're also setting up your nemesis cards so it does so much for you and that's why it's absolutely insane of course we're playing the one flame banshee and the colossus this is just a package that we're playing i really like this package i think this package is insane like just ending on a colossus on top of like an omni negate with griffin rider and then potentially a rank six and a rank six that you could be playing as lars another one that i'm not playing here that you could play instead of is the, is the ddd rank six i forget the name wave king caesar or high wave king caesar that card is really good as well i just decided to play lars because because I prefer the negate over the summon disruption. Well, I know the DDD card is good and you can use it twice, but setting up multiple negates, especially in a format where a lot of people are not playing negates, when you're able to actually do that yourself, it's very, very broken. So that's why I like the Lars. But again, this could very easily be the DD card and it could be perfectly fine as well. We're playing one Typhon, one Zeus, of course, because we are playing all of these uh, Xyz monsters. Doesn't come up too often, but when they do, they're really, really good. One Lizardos. Lizardos is another card that helps you set up your Nemesis package. So if you don't have anything banished, or let's say you only have one card banished and you're not able to set up your flag plus corridor, what you can do is you can make your Lizardos. Lizardos is a down arrow, so it actually sets up for a parallel exceed as well, funny enough. But uh, Lizardos is really good because you can banish itself. So now it's another card banished that you can use for your Nemesis cards, and it helps you draw a card as well. So Lizard Dust is something that you don't go into very often, but when you do, it's good. And then, of course, one SP Broken, one Silhouette Rabbit. This is a card that you want to end on as well a lot of the time with your trap. So this card is really good. And then one Axis Code Talker. You don't go into it very often, but when you do, it is really good. You could also argue in this deck to cut these guys because you don't have a lot of Xyz monsters to begin with. You could cut these guys and play other Link monsters. It's really up to you. The, the nice thing about this deck is it's really flexible. But I will say that these cards up here, I've been really liking. Like these are pretty much mandatory and so is the Silhouette Rabbit. I really like these cards as well. Even Axis Code, you don't go into that often. So like these three, I would say, 
you can swap into something else, but it's just other options for you. And I like having different options because I think it becomes really powerful that way. So just before we get into the side deck here, I do want to say that with the side deck, it's always going to be up to personal preference. This is just kind of a little skeleton I put together that you guys can use and build your own side deck with. Now, of course, this is not the be all end all. If your locals is a bunch of back row, do you side for back row? If it's a bunch of front row and combo, you side for combo. This is kind of just a little bit of everything. It covers a little bit of everything. So that's why I want to show you guys this. It's been working well for me, but again, not the be all end all. You guys can build it as you prefer but we are playing the one dweller dweller i think is really good because especially against a lot of the graveyard decks you just side this in for any of your extra deck pieces that you might not need so one dweller going second this deck does struggle a little bit so we are playing the three lava golem we're playing two thrust one harpies one change of heart and three evenly match this is kind of what we're playing for going second because uh yeah again like i said you don't play a lot of breakers in this deck i mean the bestials and the hand traps are always going to be good but these cards are absolutely insane against a lot of decks so i do like playing these and you don't use your normal summon so lava golem is perfectly fine in this deck and that's why i really like this lineup over here the going second does kind of hinder your strategy a lot it is tough because you don't break a lot of boards with this deck so these cards do that for you but of course we need to side to go first as well we're playing one d barrier just because you can search it off a thrust so going first you can also side and thrust and uh, get the d barrier and then we're playing three solemn judgment of course as well so this is kind of just covers a little bit of everything covers combo covers back row covers a little bit of everything but again it's just a skeleton for you guys to use you don't have to copy it one for one but just for you guys to have an idea of how to side in this deck so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Fiendsmith Adventure for the October 2024 format. Of course, Rota is coming out, which means Fiendsmith is getting some more support. At that point, we can update the deck. But right now, I think this deck is absolutely insane. It does so much so well, and it has so many different synergies. The end boards are like Omni Negate, Omni Negate, just you can't play that's just how insane this deck is and they just work so well together now if you guys enjoyed this video though make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more youtube content just like this one we do deck profiles combo videos do replace vlogs all that good stuff right here on the channel so if you guys want to stay tuned into all of that make sure to subscribe to the channel i appreciate every single one of you thank you guys all for watching though with that thank you